In this module, I'll go through the DMAIC improvement process again, but in much more detail, describing what tools can be used along each step. So let's dive straight in. An introduction to DMAIC was given in the white belt training, and this will develop on that training. So as we know, DMAIC stands for Define, Measure, Analyze, Improve and Control, and it shares many similarities with collaborative problem solving or A3 problem solving. Define, the first step, refers to defining the problem in a problem statement, creating a problem charter that outlines the scope of the project and selecting your team members. So what tools can help with this? Well, depending on the nature of the problem, this may include surveys or questionnaires to gather the voice of the customer. If you think back to the quality function deployment module, these are the traits that the customer want in their product or service. Other tools that could be used include flowcharts or SIPOC diagrams. SIPOC stands for Supplier, Input, Process, Output and Customer. So a SIPOC diagram is a high-level overview of the entire value stream from supplier all the way to customer. And it's a great way to identify where the scope of your project lies. In the example included, um, we're looking at a pizza restaurant. The suppliers are grocery, store, grocery stores and dairy farms. The inputs are the ingredients. And finally, the customers are in their different forms, whether that be dine-in, takeaway or home delivery. SIPOC diagrams are a simple good way to ensure that everyone is on the same page and you're aware of where the project boundary is. Moving on to the measure stage, the measure stage involves quantifying and gathering the facts. So how you do this varies greatly depending on what you're trying to measure, but data collection is always the first step. Tools could include benchmarking, where you compare your process to others to see how they differ. And typically benchmarking is used between different competitors to measure improvement gaps, but it can equally be conducted internally. For example, if the process you're looking to improve happens in five different offices, then why not measure the difference between the offices to help uncover clues for improvement? Process sigma calculations can be conducted. Uh, we'll not go into details for how to calculate that, but it will help identify how capable your process is. And hypothesis testing could be used to question the data and state confidence levels in that data. Moving on to the analyze phase, analyze is all about understanding the causes of the problem. And it's very rare that a problem has one single cause. It is normally the combination of causes varying in significance. That is why tools such as root cause analysis and five whys are so effective to identify these causes. And a Pareto diagram can then be used to quantify and rank the causes to ensure that the most significant ones are addressed first. Then moving on to improve. Improving involves actually implementing the solutions to overcome the identified root causes. And tools here include brainstorming, design of experiments to pick the solutions that provide the greatest impact on reducing the problem and achieving the outcome. QFD or quality function deployment can be used to improve the quality of the product or service for a customer. And other in tools include discrete event simulation or any other form of simulation. And simulation packages have become much more user friendly and can be used, for example, to identify optimized batch sizes, uh, optimal factory layouts, process flows, that sort of thing. The key thing with these tools is that they should actually be implemented by the end of this stage. So you want to have made the changes that you are required at the end of the improved stage. Finally, moving to control, the final phase closes the feedback loop and ensures the results and impacts are measured and controlled. And tools that could help here include process sigma calculation, a rerun of the customer surveys to find out what has happened and what the response was, or statistical process control charts to measure the improvements.
the key thing here is to measure the KPI or the process variable that was identified in the measure stage because that is a direct comparison. The DMAIC improvement process is one of many structured problem solving approaches and everyone has their personal favourite, each with their own merits. My personal favourite is the nine step process explained in the collaborative problem solving module as I believe it is more structured and clearer to follow. But the point I'm trying to make is that whatever approach you take, whether it be the automotive favour of 8D or the A3 problem solving approach or the PDCA cycle, they all share very similar principles. The importance of using data to make decisions, the importance of following a structured approach with scientific thinking, involving a team, a team of the right people, and the iterative nature of problem solving in cycles and the act of diverging and converging ideas. By diverging and converging ideas, I'm referring to the common feature with problem solving that you start by diverging, like brainstorming ideas. You then prioritise and converge ideas into solutions. This diverge-converge loop can repeat multiple times, but ultimately, problem solving is all about this. Uncovering causes and factors that affect the problem then associating solutions to the most important factors to ensure that they don't repeat and happen again. The structured Six Sigma DMAIC approach follows five steps and you can use tools and techniques within each step to help clarify points, ensure clear communication and everyone's on the same page and also help uncover solutions that otherwise could be missed. Please select the appropriate tool on each stage as you see necessary. Remember the tools are there to help support what you are trying to achieve. You should not first select a tool but you should first look at the problem and then select the appropriate tool for that.